Welcome. Welcome, humanity, for spring 2021. Chess College. It is Tuesday, day before our new president will be inaugurated. Hopefully you're being safe out there. Hopefully you're staying safe. These are weird times. These quarantine times. Anyway, welcome to the class. I'm not going to bore you with all the quarantine talk, but you know how that goes. Uh, this is um, a film class that I hope it's going to change your lives. That's right. Change your life. Is that possible? Absolutely. Uh, we're going to talk about movies, film, cinema in such a way that maybe you haven't experienced. Hopefully you haven't. Um, I've been studying cinema for a long time, folks, a long time. Uh, I went to school to study filmmaking and in the 1970s, um, long before you were even thought of, most of you. Um, my, by the way, my name is Rex Haas Thompson. Please refer to me as Rex or Professor Thompson. I'd rather not uh, anybody call me, hey, you, or what's up, or what's up, or dude, Rex, or Professor Thompson will do. Um, please feel free to contact me. Uh, I, I posted my email on the our Canvas site, but it's rexhaas at yahoo.com. Please tell me your name and the class you're in. I've got several classes, and it's I don't make me go back and look at uh, – what class you're registered in. So just say um, the number of the class. That will help me uh, immensely. Thanks. Um, or you could text me. I don't mind text. Um, or you can email me. Text me at 530-9419-661. I'd rather not you call because when I see a number I don't recognize, I don't answer it. Uh, that's how I roll. Um, anyway, if you got issues, if you want to talk later, let's have at it. If you need to have office visit, personal time, um, let's make an appointment. It's a virtual office and we can meet on a zoom meeting, uh, or we can meet on FaceTime if you have uh, that technology, uh, or we could just uh, talk on the phone. That's, that's great. So, um, whatever issues you might be having, please feel free to contact me and we'll set something up. Um, hopefully you know how to use Canvas. That's our platform. That's our, it's our template for this entire class. And so please, if you haven't used uh, Canvas yet, go through, take the tutorial, click on all the stuff. I use a bunch of it, not all of it, but I do use, uh, um, Modules, modules, which is why I'll be posting this. Uh, I, I record these on YouTube and I post them on modules, and so that's where you'll see it, hopefully. But I also post stuff on uh, and announcements every day, daily, maybe. Um, I'll try to do two of these lectures a week, like we're in class. If we are at in campus right now, we'd be having class. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday, let's say. <laughs> and so that's why I've decided to do these lectures on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, I post them. You need to watch them. Um, how do I know you're watching them? I could tell. Um, you don't have to pipe in. You don't have to tell me you're there. I assume you will be there. You're in class to learn and you want to be there for the lectures. Uh, we will be having a couple Zoom sessions uh, real-time Zoom with everybody. Maybe you've done those already. We're not going to do one for two weeks or so, so don't worry about it yet. I'll announce those plenty of time. Uh, so if you can't make the Zoom meeting, no big deal, uh, but it'd be nice to be able to put your name to an actual image. Let me see what you look like. Let me see what you talk like and sound like. And don't be embarrassed or shy. Look at me. Anyway, I'm recording from my studio. I'm an artist. I'm a painter. Yes, that's a self-portrait back there. And um, I'm also a filmmaker and a novelist and a playwright 
And I moved to Hollywood a long time ago and was worked in Hollywood for 10 years as a everything, mostly film crews. I uh, wanted to be a director. I got to direct uh, films later when I moved out to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I directed several films out there, wrote them. I'm also a playwright, uh, which I love doing. Uh, but right now, theater is shut down because of the pandemic. Not much of an audience, but I did just recently have a uh, Zoom uh, reading of one of my plays that I haven't posted yet, but I'll be posting that on YouTube. Uh, don't worry, I won't make you look at it. Or maybe I will, you never know. Um, and when I got a bunch of actors, there are a bunch of people around the country, they, uh, nobody here in Reading, actually. A um, couple of actors from L.A., one from Portland, one from Sacramento, and we all had a, a, a read-through of one of my plays. It was harder than I thought it was going to be because we had to have the technology down, and I'm not saying it's that smooth. Oh, well, I'm still work, kind of working on the edit on that. Um, so I'm keeping my hand. I'm work, right now I'm working on a, uh, a documentary, a solo show I did, a solo show meaning I perform in front of audiences, I'm a musician, uh, I write these plays, I do these monologues, and we perform this, and then the pandemic shut all the theaters down and I got canceled everywhere. Uh, so now I'm gonna make a film of it. Um, the best I can, something to do. Um, also, I'm working on a, um, a feature uh, film project, which is going to be a uh, eight-part, um, essentially, YouTube series uh, that I'm writing and directing about aging punk rockers. Um, hmm. It's going to be funny and furious, and hopefully I'll film these episodes if I raise some money, and we'll be off and running once we all get inoculations and the spring brings in the warm sunshine. Uh, that's my plans anyway. Um, the pandemic has got kind of, it's got to go away a bit before we start actually trying to feasibly do filming on that. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm about. If you noticed on announcements, I said, please introduce yourself in discussions and do that this week and give me your bios. Give us your bios. We want to know who you are. If you want to share, if you don't, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, and then tell in, in the discussion of who you are, who you, what your dreams are, what you're trying to do, what, why you're in school, anything like that, it's fine. Um, whatever you feel like sharing. Um, and then tell me uh, why does movies matter or do they matter? Uh, do you have a relationship with movies? Do you like going to movies? Do you, uh, what do you think about movies? Um, are they simply, um, I, if we're live in a class, I go around the class and I say, why do you go to movies? People raise their hands. They go, oh, I like to kill time. I go, well, and you want to uh, save your time. <laughs> Believe me, as you get older. Uh, the other qu uh, answer I usually get is uh, for entertainment. I want to be entertained. Okay, movies should be entertaining. Um, but the good ones also give us something, uh, a reflection of our culture, what we're going through. Um, maybe something in our own lives, maybe something we could relate to. Um, even, um, you know, brand new movies, the, all the, uh, Marvel comic stuff. I'm not saying I relate to it at all. Um, but maybe you do. So share it. Um, or not. We're going to be looking at the history of film. Yes, we'll be, which started, you know, in not this century, folks, not the 20th century, the 19th century, the tail end. And we're going to be looking at all sorts of stuff. And we'll look at, I'll sign you guys film clips to watch. You'll be watching movies, uh, documentaries on making movies, documentaries on filmmakers, documentaries, on writers, directors, cinematographers. So uh, you need to, um, be prepared to watch the stuff on your own. Now, normally it would be in the class. I'd be showing the stuff in class and you I'd shut the lights off. You turn on your cell phones and everybody uh, falls asleep, but at least you're in class, watch supposedly watching the movies. Now you're going to have to watch them on their own. And um, so there's a bunch of different 
platforms for that. Maybe you have Netflix. Maybe you have Hulu. Maybe you have HBO Max, Amazon. There's a bunch of them. Maybe you don't have any of that. Um, but most things you can watch on YouTube. Uh, you're going to have to pay a fee probably for most things, uh, especially the newer stuff. Um, I'm sorry about that, but because we're not commuting to college anymore and we're not take, we don't have to pay parking space fees or drive our car out 20 miles to Shasta College, think of that as saving money. Um, and so there will probably be a fee on some of these movies, and it's usually $3. Uh, I'll find them free if I can. We use Canopy on, on Shasta College website library and also films on demand but a lot of times they do not have what i'm looking for and what you need to see um and sometimes like i say the stuff is free a lot of times it isn't uh you're gonna uh, look at the go over the syllabus look at it it's uh, it's there for a purpose actually for you to, to understand um the syllabus is kind of the blueprint of this this class it kind of gives you a heads up on what we're going to cover, everything from silent movies to movies from every decade. That's what we're going to cover um, as much as we can in 17 weeks. Um, we'll be going through early, early cinema, um, as early as 1902 and 1903, uh, silent cinema of the 20s. Gangster cinema of the 30s, musicals, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, movies of the 40s, which would be uh, a lot of World War II propaganda movies, John Wayne movies, um, all sorts of wonderful movies came out of the 40s while we're at war <laughs> in the world, and we're still making movies, folks, and we're still making movies in the Depression era. When people didn't have jobs, but they're still making movies because they, Hollywood knows how to make a dollar. And then through the 50s, post-World War II, where cinema changed, all of a sudden more films are being filmed in color, acting has changed with Mar people like Marlon Brando, James Dean, Montgomery Cliff, and the content's changing. Cinema becomes a little bit darker, a little bit more adult and grown up, not so much about entertainment because we just come through a war. And now we're in a cold war with communist Soviet union. And it's, it's for reals. We actually thought for many years that we could be victims of a nuclear attack. And so the films reflected that. Then we had the, the sixties, things are popping in the sixties, the studio systems failing because they've lost their audience to television. Uh, also, they've lost the youth audience. They're making kind of uh, bloated musicals and like Dr. Doolittle and uh, big pageantry movies like Cleopatra and the young market, say your age, are staying way in droves because they're not seeing anything they can relate to or they want to see that stuff anymore. And so a great uh, visionary by the name of Roger Corman came around and started making movies with the youth market in mind only. Uh, one time in this country, there was five, 6,000 drive-in movie theaters. Have you ever been to a drive-in? Well, there was five or 6,000 of them in the day. And he said, there's an audience out there that loves drive-in movies. That's right. Kids who have their driver's license and they're taking a six pack of beer and they're having, uh, they're making out in the back seat, doing their naughty work back there. And they like to sit and watch a movie. But what can they watch and still uh, still relate to what they're seeing? So Corman came up with this idea to, that kids love to see horror films. And so he made a series of horror films. He The kids like to see biker films. That's Hell's Angel movies. Uh, so he came up with the, uh, a bunch of biker films that were very popular. And they also like to see movies about drugs, sex, and rock and roll. And so then he brought those elements into his movies, like The Trip. And uh, But they also made um, 
beach party movies with the nephew and a cello that was happy surf music. Surfing was a big deal in this country uh, in the early 60s, the Beach Boys, and rock and roll changed everything, especially when the Beatles popped out. And all of a sudden, the youth saw something they could relate to. Corman would introduce these elements into his films, and it changed everything. The adults didn't understand it. That was cool. It's cool to rebel against your parents. Let them stay at home watching Gilligan's Island reruns. Kids wanted to go to the movies and see uh, movies about freedom, rebellion, having a good time, surfing, bike, motorcycle riding. And if you smoke some pot and drink some booze along the way and have... Uh, have uh, premarital sex along the way and listening to uh, Jimi Hendrix, it was pretty good. Then the 70s hit and things changed again. Late 70s, the blockbuster video of Blockbuster came out. What was the first blockbuster? Jaws, friends. First film to ever make $100 million. Steven Spielberg's beloved Big Shark. And it changed everything because all of a sudden the box office was crazy. Nobody had ever made that kind of money before. And that became like Hollywood perked up. They like making money. And so two or two, three years later, uh, George Lucas' Star Wars popped out and made twice the amount of money of Spielberg's movie. And also was a franchise with toys and lunch boxes and Star Wars jammies. And I know some of you have those. Uh, and, George Lucas made a fortune on franchising and uh, making toys, lunch pails, bot, you know, like I said, sheets, pajamas for kids. And to this day, it, that's going on. That sort of blockbuster mentality is what's running or ruining Hollywood now. And we're having, you know, endless sequels of superheroes running around with capes, fighting bad. Uh, they're good guys who have superpowers and they're fighting for, for the good, right? Well, why Superman? And so we're going to go up to contemporary f uh, films um, a little because I got to cover a lot of ground and um, I don't need to cover too much ground contemporary-wise because we're living it. Uh, so look at your... Um, Look at your syllabus. You're going to write these essays, and you're going to have to get a textbook. Here's one of them right here. This is going to be a key to your essay writing. It's a little one. It's cheap. I think it costs 6 bucks. to have it at the bookstore. If not, you're going to have to get it online. It's called, it's all in the syllabus, writing about movies. How to break down a movie. From what, what is a scene? What is a dramatic arc? What does a cinematographer do? What does a director do? Do you know? You just you know the words, but do you know what they actually do? Um, how to write your essays. This book is going to be key, and I'm going to be referring to this a lot. If you have a copy, it's going to help your essays. Because when you start writing essays, I want to sign one for a little bit. We're not there yet. I'm going to make you put your critical thinking cap on and analyze the movie, not give your personal opinion, whether you liked it or not, but what you think it's about. What do you think the filmmaker, which is the director, the cinematographer, the actors, what do you think they're trying to do here? Are they trying to, what's their story? Are you seeing symbolism? Do you see any themes? That's what we're going to be looking for. I want you to start looking at films on a deeper level than you've ever done before. Not just a thumbs up or a thumbs down. No, we're going to go deeper in that. And these will be three page essays. I'll talk about that more when we get to writing our first one, which will be on a silent film. Yes. You're going to have to watch a silent film and you're going to write about it. And you're going to have to sit through it. And I'm going to tell you this right now. You could go research this stuff, but I want you to watch it. I could tell if you haven't seen the film or not. I could tell if you're just getting information off the internet, like you wikipedia a silent film. I could tell you haven't seen the film. I want you guys to look at these films. It's important. I mean, how fun is it? You get to watch movies. 
and a class. That's pretty cool. Hang on a sec. I got to let my cat out. I, I thought you were out. I want to go out to the Sorry about that. Um, so we're going to be analyzing films. We're going to be analyzing, critically thinking, what makes a film tick? Why does it work? Why does it work? What are you getting out of it? Are you getting anything out of it? Do you not understand it? Why do you think it is the way it is? A lot of work goes into films. A lot of people write these things. People have to cast them. They have to photograph them, they have to light them. A lot goes into making a film. Now, things have changed since the pandemic. Most movies, theaters are closed out there. And so a lot of what we're looking at now are streaming. And so I'm not going to de delineate. I used to say, though, that's TV. Well, it's not TV any longer because they're streaming brand new movies on the streaming services. So, movie's a movie, whether it's on stream.net or, and you're watching it on your iPhone. I w I'd rather you not, because you're missing a lot watching films on these. Uh, but if that's all you have, that's all you have. So, we'll talk about more about the essays, but this is the little book that will help you a lot. The other book is the big one. Yes, it's heavy, folks, but it's still pretty uh, reasonable. I got this, I bought this online for $23. It was used. And uh, our bookstore has them. I think you could rent them. Uh, this is it's called The Story of Film. And it's not the history of Hollywood film. It's the story of film. It's by this guy named Mark Cousins. And it's a thorough look at what makes cinema our contemporary collective art form. It's really in depth. It's going to help you get through this class to have this book because I'm going to be lecturing out of it and you'll be able to refer to the pages in the book to go read. It's going to help you. We're going to have a midterm quiz and the, the between my lectures and the films you watch and this book, it's going to help you get through that quiz, uh, which is an open book quiz. Take home, take home. We're all at home. Uh, so that book's a key. There's also a documentary that goes with this. It's on Canopy. I'll be assigning episodes. They follow these chapters. So you get to see a visual chapter. But the book is more in-depth than the, the, the video because, you know, books could go into more depth um, than uh, visuals. And so between those two, you should get a good, good survey history of films. Now, he covers a lot of European films, Asian films, African films. I cover a bit of that. We, yes, we're going to do a foreign section, but we'll probably skip over that because we don't have time to do global cinema. I'd love to do that, but I'll do it a little. We're mostly going to stay to the history of American cinema and how it radiated out into the world and affected everybody. Everything. Great fil French filmmaker Jean-Luc Godard, 
Never heard of him. He's going to be 90 this year. He's still alive. He made a film last year. He's still making films. His came up in the 1950s. He was a writer. Made his first film called Breathless, and it changed the course of cinema. We'll be talking about his influence on our world, but he's also famously is quoting everything is cinema. I'm going to leave you with that. Think about it. Next time I see you on Monday, uh, Thursday, we'll be delving in to the story of film. Please get these books. You have a couple weeks. Take this week, next week, to go get these books. I want to sign readings till next week, probably. I, I won't. Because uh, everybody won't have one. Anyway, what I expect in this class is just some to have fun, for one. We're watching movies, folks, and we get to uh, discuss them and look at them and view them. That's a gift. That's incredible, actually. And I hope you might think the same way. And uh, let's take this journey together. I'm only as good as the students in my class. If I get good feedback, good reaction to these things, it makes me my game better. I'm obsessed with cinema, always have. It's ongoing. I'm not stopping. Um, this journey is just beginning, and I've been at it for 50 years. So with that happy thought, let's see where the future of cinema goes. Come on with this journey. Take it with me. And remember, everything is cinema. <laughs>